In the past decade, we have had a few cases brought before our courts, which involve climate change impact issues. However, the development of judicial decision-making with regard to those cases has been pretty limited because those cases interrogate the initial decision-making process by public officials. And therefore, the development of our jurisprudence in this regard has been limited to administrative law um, sphere in looking at the initial question whether there was even the first engagement with the relevant evidence that was supposed to have been considered. But from those cases that have served before us, we are picking up certain challenges, which I'm sure will continue to be a difficulty with our consideration of climate change impact cases going forward. For example, the imbalance in the extent to which state officials or state decision makers engage or consider evidence that is contained in environmental impact assessment reports. On the other side, private entities or private parties tend to engage with this evidence more substantively and realistically. And therefore the courts are often confronted with lopsided evidence in which the evidence presented by private parties tends to be more articulate and have, having correctly engaged with the issues concerned. This raises capacity issues, both with the public authority decision makers and the courts themselves, because where public officials have not been able to consider properly the evidence placed before them, the courts then are left with an imbalance. And therefore, it lies with the courts to build or enhance their foundational knowledge on climate change issues. Because when that doesn't happen, there is the risk that whatever evidence is presented before court as opinion evidence by experts, by one side with the other side lacking, will be readily accepted by courts where the courts themselves do not have the necessary foundational knowledge. So given these challenges, are South African courts then ready and will they be able to adapt to the challenges that are posed by climate change impact? I do think that we are ready. Firstly, we do have the necessary legal framework. The right to an environment that is not harmful is enshrined in our constitution. And therefore, the wealth of jurisprudence that we have built in the past in interpreting and applying other human rights-based rights and laws. For example, the right to health, which is also a fundamental right enshrined in our constitution, which has been interpreted very extensively within the context of the HIV um, in, uh, pandemic is jurisprudence that we can draw on draw, or draw from in, in our interpretation of climate change disputes before us. And part of that interpretation involves interpreting laws, agreements, 
and any legal documents purposively to suit the context that arises at a point in time. Even further, South African courts have a strong culture of having regard to international jurisprudence. And therefore, where our jurisprudence is lagging in climate change jurisprudence, we will readily draw from other jurisdictions. And lastly, importantly, I think there is sufficient awareness of the need to build foundational knowledge on the part of judges to supplement or complement um, the context evidence that we will be considering as presented in expert opinion evidence in, in environmental impact assessment um, reports presented before us.